Hey everyone, all right, today we're gonna to be doing a comparison of two watches and uh, this is gonna be similar to the last comparison I did when I compared the Orient Bambino to the Timex Metropolitan uh, in that rather than put these two watches directly head to head to see which one is the better watch, um, we're really gonna be trying to see which one is the better value and the reason why is that, again, like that comparison, we're comparing the Orient Bambino uh, to a much cheaper watch. So last time the Timex was uh, priced around $40 versus the Bambino's $120, rough price ranges. So you're, we're looking at the Bambino being three times as expensive as the Timex Metropolitan and uh, therefore hopefully being three times as much watch as the Timex Metropolitan. Today though, we're gonna be comparing it uh, to a watch that's roughly the same price as the Metropolitan, but I think a much closer in quality and components uh, to the Bambino. So today we're going to be comparing the Orient Bambino with the Guanchin GJ16034, which is a watch that I picked up on Gearbest a little while back. You can see the uh, quick review that I did of it, and I was very impressed with it. And one of the things that I thought of when I was going through and looking at it was, you know, how similar quality it was to something like the Orient Bambino, which is amazing because the Bambino was already, you know, considered one of the best values. Uh, in the watch industries, like if you're looking for a dress watch under 100 or under $200, it's really hard to find anything better than the Bambino, and that's you know it's a it's a watch that's loved by so many people for really good reasons. It's an amazing watch, um, but here we're looking at a watch you know from a Chinese company that you know in its level of quality and execution and components. Um, it's not that far behind the Bambino. And so today we're gonna be looking, again, from the perspective to see if the, uh, if the Bambino is three times as much watch as this Guanchin GJ160, and if it's, if it's not, if it can't score three times as many points as the, uh, as the Guanchin can, uh, then we're going to say that the Guanchin is the better value, and that's really what we're looking at. Um, out of the gate, I will say I do think that the Orient Bambino is the better watch straight up of the two, but it's a lot closer than I would have expected. So let's go ahead and take a look. So let's look at the categories we're going to be comparing these two watches at today. We're going to be looking at the case, the crystal, the band, the movement, the dial, the brand, and usability. And you'll notice the one category that we're not looking at is value. And the way we're going to determine value is um, really by adding up the points, not considering the value of the watch or the price of the watch without taking that into consideration, which will tell us you know, roughly which watch is the better watch and how much better. Um, but then we'll, t we'll factor in the price. And what we're going to do is we're going to say that because the Guanchin is three times as expensive, sorry, because the Bambino is three times as expensive as the Guanchin, um, it should score three times as many points. And if it doesn't, then we're going to say that the Guanchin is the better value, and we'll see how much better value it is. And this will be really interesting because I think up until, um, you know, maybe about a year ago, the, the Orient Bambino was the undisputed leader in the value category for dress watches. There was nothing that was even close to it. And even today, I, I still think it is an amazing value for the money for the kind of dress watch and the quality you're getting and the style that you're getting. Um, there's very few watches that compete with it um, at that price point. But I think the, there's been these challenges recently from China, from a couple of Chinese brands that have been putting out some really impressive watches uh, for just an incredibly low price. And I think this Guanchin is one today. So that's what we're going to take a look at today and see how close these watches are and how much better the Guanchin is, or sorry, how much better the Bambino is than the Guanchin. So let's go ahead and get into the, uh, the categories and start scoring the points for them and see what we wind up with. So first category we're gonna look at is the case, and this is one where I'm actually gonna give the edge to the Guanchin. I'm gonna give the Guanchin two points and the Bambino, I'm just gonna give it one point uh, for this category. And the reason is because the, the Bambino, the, the case is a very nice, solid case. It's, it's simple, it looks good, it's well built, it has nice you know, contrasting brushing and polishing um, on the edges, good finishing, it's a, it's a great case. 
Um, but the, really the star of the show for the Bambino is the domed crystal and the dial and that kind of outshines it. And because of that, um, the case is really slim. Um, the dial takes out, or the crystal um, really dominates the, the face of the watch. And even from a side view of the watch, you can see that the crystal is almost like half of the height of the watch. So it's, it's cool that the case is so small and out of the way, but there's, you know, it's not the impressive part of the, um, of the watch. The Guanchino, on the other hand, I think the case, they, that's where they really tried to add some uniqueness, and they came out because of their case design, and particularly the faceted bezel around the, the top of the case. Um, it's just a really unique look that I haven't seen in any other dress watches, and I really like it. It's, it's one of my favorite case designs for a dress watch um, that I've seen. You know, the rest of the, the case is very classic, um, very traditional. You get all polished surfaces, so pretty simple there. Um, but the, the faceted bezel on the top really is a, is a unique look that I, I really enjoy and it's something that I think adds a lot of character. So that's why it's going to get the extra point on the case category and beat out the Bambino there. The crystal, we're going to give the Bambino two points to the Guanchines one. Um, the crystal is, you know, one of the, the you know, most recognizable features of the Orient Bambino. It's a very high domed minimal, mineral crystal. Um, it's, it's much different than your, your typical domed crystal that you see on either dress watches, dye watches, or any, anything else um, out there, you know, especially in this price range. Um, it's a very different look. It stands very tall and it's very unique and it really sets the, the watch apart and it's really its defining uh, characteristic. And so just because of that uniqueness, it's going to beat out the Guanchin and get two points versus the Guanchin's one. Now it doesn't completely blow it out of the water because the Guanchin actually has a sapphire crystal on it, which you know, for a lot of people, this might actually be the better option because with the Bambino, you're getting a mineral crystal that's very high uh, dome, so it's going to be much more prone to scratching than the Guanchin's. The Guanchin's crystal is a little bit protected by that bezel that it has. It's also sapphire, it's flat, uh, much less likely to get knocked and bumped. And so a lot of people might actually prefer the Guanchin's crystal to the Bambino's. Um, but just because of the uniqueness and the character that it adds, I'm going to give the Bambino the point, extra point for the crystal there. So two points for the Bambino, one point for the Guanchin. Band is a pretty simple category here, but the Bambino is going to get uh, three points for the band to the Guanchin's one. So much better band, I think, on the Guan on the Bambino than the Guanchin. The Bambino's band, it's a very cheap, or sorry, the Guanchin's band is a very cheap band. It's an imitation crocodile. Le it's genuine leather, but it's imitation, it's not crocodile leather. Um, so you, which you typically find um, whenever you're getting a crocodile looking uh, strap. Um, but it's kind of on the lower end of the quality wise. The underside's a little bit plasticky. And you know, where I think they tried to kind of give you something extra by giving you a deployment class, which is really cool. It's something that you don't see in this price range ever. Um, unfortunately, the deployment class that they gave you, I think is really uncomfortable and not something that I'd really want to wear that often. Um, the one benefit to the Guanchin over the Bambino with the strap is that it's a 20 millimeter strap, so it's a standard size, whereas the Bambino has a 21 millimeter strap. Um, but that 21 millimeter strap, even though it's harder to replace and find straps in that size, it is a very nice strap, very simple, very elegant, um, nice, plain, black dress strap, good clasp, comfortable, um, high quality leather. Um, so all around, I'm gonna, I think it's a much better strap and I much prefer it to the one that came with the Guanchin. So I'm going to give the Bambino three points there to the Guanchin's one. Movement, I'm going to give the, uh, the edge to the Bambino again because it has an in-house automatic movement that hacks, that hands winds, that's very accurate. Uh, it's a Japanese movement that Orient themselves make, so that adds a lot of character and value just in, in that kind of you know, unique fact in itself. Uh, and again, this is someplace where you would expect the Guanchin to, or sorry, the Bambino to really um, outshine any sort of Chinese branded watch. Um, however, the Guanchin, they, they went and picked up um, a set of Japanese movements to add in there. And I say movements because, you know, they, there's two different versions of this watch out there. There's one with a Seiko NH35 and there's one with a Miyota movement. Um, the NH35 is I, I think a better movement and you know you could make the case that the NH35 is a better movement than Orient's in-house movement as far as you know on a technical level um, you know on a horological level where you know you want to take into fact the take into account the fact that the Orient's is an in-house movement 
um, you know, that adds a, some extra points there. But on a technical level, you could definitely make the case that the Seiko NH35 is, is a better movement uh, mechanically. But you never know what you're going to get. And the particular NH35 movement that I got with my Guanchin, when I tried to do an accuracy test on it, it was not running very well, something like 30 seconds a day fast. Um, and that could be due to the fact that I was just wearing it on my wrist when I was timing it. Um, I don't have watch winders or anything like that, so it's not ideal testing environments. The Orient's was coming in around plus 17 seconds, so much more reasonable. Um, but again, you know, that, that kind of depends on which movement you get. Uh, all that said, I'm still giving the points to the Bambino because there's more consistency there. You know which movement you're getting. It is an in-house movement, um, and it's something that they make and, and you know, manage themselves. So I'll give them two points to the Guanchin's one. Next, we'll talk about the dial, and this is actually, is actually a pretty close one as well, but I think the Bambino's dial is better. It's a, it's a curved dial, so it has more depth than the Guanchin's. Uh, the sunburst pattern on the Bambino is just this really beautiful deep blue that really catches the light in interesting ways. Uh, the markers are very well done with, the, you know, you, with applied markers at the uh, 12, 3, 6, and 9, and then printed markers at the other hours and just really clean, easy to read. Um, again, with that, that curved dial really gives it a lot of depth, and I, th I think it's just, you know, it's one of the prettiest dials on a watch that I've seen, and so to have that on a, a dress watch I think is just great. That said, the Guanchin's dial is a very nice dial as well. It's also a very well done. Um, it's, it's simpler, There's, you know, you don't get the curved dial. They went for just a, a nice, um, more traditional uh, silver, sunburst effect but the sunburst is very nice uh, catches the light really well looks really pretty and the indices are very well done I really like that the 12 o'clock applied indices with the um, Roman numerals up there I think it looks really uh, classic and again adds a little bit of extra character uh, but the dial on the, the Bambino is the better dial um, but not by a whole lot so I'm going to give the dial on the Bambino a 2 versus the Guanchin's 1. Talking about the brand, and this is where I think there's really no comparison. Orient is a far better band that, brand than Guanchin. Guanchin doesn't really have a lot of heritage or reputation, other than the fact that recently they've just been making some really good watches at insane prices. Um, Orient has been around for much longer. Um, they're much more uh, well established, and you know they're much more reputable as well. So if you're looking for a brand that's going to actually stand behind their watches and be able to get them serviced or repaired, or to back up a warranty. You know, all of that you're going to get with Orient, whereas with the Guanchin, you know, it's, it's a small brand based in China that, you know, really I, I, I don't have any hopes of ever getting a warranty uh, service out of the thing. Um, you're, you're going to pay your insanely low price for it, but you get your watch and, and you're kind of on your own with it from there. And if it breaks down, you're probably just going to throw it away and buy a new one. Finally, usability. This is a category where I'm actually going to give an extra point to the Guanchin. I think it has better usability than the Bambino for a couple of reasons. So one, it has the 20 millimeter straps, uh, so you can change out straps much more easily. You know, typically you're going to have, a, you know, if you're collecting watches, you probably have a number of watches with 20 millimeter lugs, and because of that, you're more likely to buy 20 millimeter straps. And it's nice to be able to trade your straps between your different watches. I only have one watch with a 21 millimeter. Uh, lug with and that's my Bambino so I only have two straps for it I have the strap that it came with and then I purchased one more and you know I, I'm less likely to purchase straps for the Bambino because if I do I know that it's only going to be used there whereas if I buy a 20 millimeter one I can swap it between my Guanchin and my Weekender um, or you know if I get another 20 mil millimeter watch in the future you know there's more options there. So that's a great usability feature there to be able to get more distance out of your watch. Um, I also think that the Guanchin, just overall its look is a little bit more versatile. Um, and then being, I think, tougher having the sapphire crystal means, you know, it's easier to wear it in casual situations or in situations where, you know, you might be a little bit more rough, at, rough with it. Whereas I always feel like with the Bambino, I really have to kind of baby it because I'm always nervous about that high domed mineral, mineral crystal and for me a dress watch that starts getting scratches on the crystal is really something I want to avoid uh, and so I'm, I'm really careful whenever I wear it in the situations that I wear it in whereas with the Guanchin you know also because of the price and then the sapphire crystal and the case and everything again I feel like I'm, I'm less careful with it and so there's more situations that I wear it. Finally the, Guan, or the Guanchin um, has 
uh, on the dial, you've got two features that also set it apart a little bit. You get a little bit of loom on the hands. I, it's hard to give it any credit for that because the loom lasts maybe five minutes and then it's gone. But the Bambino doesn't have any loom. So you know what? For the, the first five minutes in a dark room or driving through a tunnel or something, um, you would still be able to read the time on the Guanchin, whereas on the Bambino, you've got to wait until you get light shining on that dial. The other thing is that the Guanchin has a day-date complication compared to the Bambino's date only. Um, so that one extra feature allows you to track the day of the week as well as the date, which sometimes that comes in handy also. So with, for all that, I think the Guanchin definitely has uh, much better usability than the Bambino. So I'm going to give it two points to the Bambino's one. All right, so let's total these scores up and see what we get. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put them up on the screen there, and hopefully this time I'll add them correctly. Last time I did this review with my Timex, um, I wound up adding them up wrong and actually got the result wrong. So sorry about that. One of the commenters pointed that out. This time I think I got it right. And here we go. So the Bambino uh, is going to score 14 points to the Guanchin's 9. So I think that's a pretty accurate comparison. I think the, Gu the Bambino is a better watch by a, a good margin. Um, but not three times as good a watch. I think the Guanchin, uh, for the, the quality and what you're getting, it's much closer to the Bambino than you would expect just looking at the prices and the brand in particular. Um, again, Orient is kind of this you know, darling among watch enthusiasts, whereas Guanchin, um, you know, Chinese watches didn't have a, a very good reputation up until a couple years ago and so for a Chinese manufacturer to be putting out a $50 uh, mechanical watch and having it be that close in quality to something like an Orient Bambino I think is really impressive and so overall I think what this tells you is you know if you're trying to choose between the two of them if you look at the Bambino and you look at that you know if you're really drawn to that domed crystal and the domed dial and just the real you know beauty and simplicity of it and you're looking for a high quality dress watch because you're going to wear a dress watch a lot it's definitely worth it, I think, to save the extra money and get the Orient Bambino. Now, on the other hand, if you aren't drawn specifically to the Bambino and you just need a dress watch and you're looking for just a good, high-quality dress watch, um, and maybe you're not the kind of guy to wear a dress watch every day or that often, and maybe you prefer you know, dive watches or aviation pieces, um, but you want to add a, a good, high-quality dress watch to your collection, I would say that, the, yeah, in that case, save your $80 and buy the Guanchin. Uh, and, you know, you're going to get a really high-quality, uh, well-built, versatile dress watch that looks great. And, you know, you're going to get it for an amazing price. So I think it's just an incredible value. And it really depends on, again, whether you're drawn specifically to the Bambino and wanting a high-quality dress watch or just needing a dress watch um, and looking for, you know, a nice, you know, good value for your money. And those are things what you've got to take into consideration. Um, so let me know what you guys think in the comments, which one you would take. Um, if you would pick the Guanchin, let me know what you do with your extra $80. If you would buy another watch or, you know, a huge strap collection or whatever. Um, or if you prefer the Bambino, let me know which Bambino you like. Because one of the cool things about the Bambino is there's dozens of different variants as far as dial dial. Uh, options and colors and straps and, and a lot of different choices out there. So let me know which Bambino you would take and uh, yeah, and why. Uh, but thanks again for watching and hope you guys enjoyed the comparison. Hope this helps some of you guys out if you're trying to pick a good budget value dress watch to add to your collection.